Hey, what is up guys? In this video, I am going to show you how to do simulated color separation in Photoshop for screen printing. This is the image that we are going to use to learn about simulated color separation. We are going to separate it into four colors. Red, yellow, blue and black. I will also show you how to merge two colors into one to reduce the number of colors. This is the halftone preview of our final result. Looks great, right? So let's dive right into the video and learn how to do simulated color separation. I have given the website link from where I have downloaded this image. Download and open the image in Photoshop. Let's convert this background to a normal layer by double clicking on it and hit OK. Let's first resize the artwork to the required print size. Go to image, trim, choose top left pixel color and hit OK to trim the background color white to the artwork size. Now again go to image, image size. Set the resample method to automatic. Uh, make sure the link icon is checked and set the print width you need. I'll set the width as 25 centimeters. The height value has changed proportionately according to the width value we entered. Set the resolution to 300 dpi. Now hit OK to apply the changes. I'll zoom in a bit. Let's make a t-shirt color channel. Hit this create new channel icon. I'll double click on it. I'll call it t-shirt color, change the type to spot color and pick the white color, hit ok, change the solidity to 100%, hit ok. Now choose the RGB channel. Let's start the color separation process. Go to select, color range, choose reds. Now select this invert option, hit ok. We will get a selection of the red colors in the image. Now save the selection as an alpha channel by clicking on this save selection as channel option from the channels panel. Let's deselect the selection. Hit Ctrl plus D to deselect. Now double click on the alpha channel. I'll call this as red. Change the color to spot color. Change the solidity to 0%. Choose the brightest red. The HSB value should be 0, 100 and 100. Now we got the red color separation. We will see if we need to tweak the red color after extracting all the other colors. Now turn on only the RGB channels. Select the color range option again. Now choose yellows. Hit OK. Let's repeat the same steps. I'll choose this save selection as channel option. Now I'll hit Ctrl plus T. Double click on the alpha channel. I'll call it as yellow. Change the color to spot color. Change the solidity to 0%. The HSB value of yellow is 60. 100 and 100. Now let's repeat the same steps and extract all the other colors. There is in green color in this image. We can verify it if we change the selection preview to grayscale. See, there isn't any black here, so it's empty. So I'll skip the greens. Next is cyan. Cyan is there. Okay. The hue value of cyan is 180 degrees. Next is blues. Blues there. The hue value of blue is 240 Magenta is there The Q value of magenta is 300 Let's check the spot channels. 
looks good. Now we need the black color. For most images, the red channel can be used as a black separation, but it is good to analyze all the RGB channels to see which channel contains the best black color information. This image is filled with warm colors such as red, orange. So red channel will work for this image. Let's check the green channel. It's very dark. Let's check the blue. It's very dark as well. So red is looking good. So we will duplicate the red channel. Double click. I'll call it as black. Make sure the solidity is zero and change the color to the darkest black. Let's check all the colors, looking good. Before we start to tweak the channels, let's make sure we have the S-Gray profile from the RTPX software loaded. I've given the download link in the description to download the S-Gray profile. Once you have downloaded it, go to edit, color settings. In the spot, choose load spot and select the downloaded S-Gray profile. I've already loaded the S-Gray profile, so I'll hit OK to confirm the color settings. We haven't tweaked the channels yet and the preview is looking great already. Now let's start tweaking the channels one by one. Let's duplicate this document so that we can compare it with the original and do the tweaking to the channels. Go to image and then choose duplicate. Hit OK. Now go to window, arrange and then choose style all horizontally. I'll zoom out this first document a bit and I'll zoom out this second document as well. In the first document, Make only the RGB channels visible and in the second document just turn off the RGB channels and make only the spot channels visible. Now let's tweak the spot color channels by comparing it with the original image. The comparison is already a lot similar except the colors look a bit dull and the black looks a bit dark. So first select the red channel. Now hit Ctrl plus L to bring out the levels adjustment. Move the shadow slider to the right to boost up the color. Watch the image as I'm moving the slider. Move it to the point where the curve starts to grow. You can see the red color is now boosted. And is looking a lot similar like the original image. So I'll apply the levels adjustment. Now choose the yellow channel and bring out the levels. Move the shadow slider to the right. If I move it till the point where the curve starts to grow, the image has become too yellowish. So I'll move it by comparing with the yellow color in the original image. The preview is looking good now, so I'll apply the levels. There isn't much difference between the blue and the cyan colors, so we can merge them. Hold the control key and click on the thumbnail of the cyan channel to make a selection. The selection edges will not be visible as the cyan is too light here, but the selection would have been made by Photoshop. So turn off the cyan channel. Now select the blue channel. Make sure the foreground and the background colors are default black and white. If it's not, hit the D key to change the colors to the default black and white. Now make sure the blue channel is selected. Now hit Alt plus Backspace to fill the selection with black. Now hit Ctrl plus D to deselect the selection. Now bring out the levels. Move the slider till the graph starts. Check the preview. The blue looks very dark here because we have combined cyan with it. We can correct it by changing the blue shade that we have selected for this channel. So now hit OK. Now double click to bring out the spot channel options. Select the color. Change the hue value to something like 200. Which is an intermediate color between the cyan and the blue. Now hit OK to apply this color. The blue color preview is not accurate. Because we have combined both the cyan and the blue into a single blue color. But it still looks good and we have combined the two colors into one color. We can delete the cyan channel. So select it and hit the delete icon. Next is magenta. Magenta is only in small areas, so we can combine the magenta with the red color. 
First, let's boost up the magenta color. Bring out the levels. Move the slider till the graph starts. And hit OK to apply the adjustment. Now make a selection of the magenta channel by holding the control key and clicking on the thumbnail of the magenta channel. Now choose the red channel. Hit the D key to change the colors to default black and white. Now black is the background color. So hit control plus backspace to fill the selection with the background color black. Now hit control plus D to deselect the selection. Now we can delete this magenta channel. Not a lot of difference here. The preview is looking still good without the magenta color. So we have combined the magenta with the red color. Now let's adjust the black color. I'll make only the black channel visible. Black looks dark, so let's reduce it. Bring out the levels. Now move the highlight slider to the left, keeping an eye on the original image. Preview is looking good now. The channel adjustments are done. We can close the original image now. I'll just zoom in a bit. Now we can convert the channels into halftones. We need to increase the resolution of this image so that we get nice and round halftone dots. Go to image and then choose image size. Change the resolution to 600 dpi. The resampling method should be set to nearest neighbor. To avoid anti-aliasing in the artwork, hit OK to apply the changes. I'll zoom out. If you haven't downloaded the free halftones actions yet, download it and load the actions in the actions panel and check the button mode on. What we are going to do is, we will convert the red, yellow and the blue colors to normal halftones. We will convert the black to inverted half tones so that the black dots will not be on top of the other color dots and will be sitting next to the color dots. Making black as inverted half tones will help with the dot gain problem that we get in the press. We will also get a nice blend between the black and the other colors if the black half tones are inverted. So first let's convert the colors to normal half tones. I'll choose only the red channel. Run this action, make half tones from channel. Set the output resolution, same as the input resolution. Choose the frequency according to the mesh count you use for the screens. I'll choose 45. Hit OK. Now we got the red half tones. I'll rename it as red. The same way, I'll convert the other colors to normal half tones. Let's make the black as inverted half tones by running this make inverted half tones from channel action. I'll make all the spot channels visible. I'll zoom in a bit. See the black dots are sitting next to the color dots. I'll rename this channel as black. This will form a nice blend between the black and the other colors when printed. I'll hide this action tab for now. If we want to see a more accurate preview, just select all the color channels and go to filter, blur and then choose Gaussian blur. A radius value of 3 pixels works well for a 600 dpi image. I'll hit OK. Now the dots will merge and give a more accurate preview of our result. I'll zoom in a bit. See the blend between black and the other colors. Looks awesome, right? So this is our halftone preview. I'll zoom out. Now I'll hit Ctrl plus Z and undo the blur on the channels. All right, the color separation and the halftone conversion is done. Now you can add registration marks and text layers and can take printouts. I've shown those steps in my step-by-step -step CMYK color separation video. I've given the video link in the description. Be sure to check out the video if you like to learn the next steps. Thanks guys. I'll see you in another video. Take care.